Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Tuesday morning here in Australia. Market up ever so slightly, not quite one percent, but it actually looks like it's down. Because I'm pretty sure this was two point five one trillion. But anyway, it says it's up. Says it's up, but it's under that two point five trillion dollar mark. Look at that Bitcoin dominance, though, rising, getting up to nearly 47%. Price sitting just under 62000 and gas about $6, and that's for a very basic transaction. I think you're actually going to pay substantially more uh, for your transactions. All right, we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some things up, some things down. Doge making a 4% move there. Uh, there you go, good for Doge holders. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? stacks it's really been on quite some run of late it's been up and down sort of at times but generally like in an upwards trend you know typical uh sort of upwards trending pattern goes up a little bit and comes down but two dollars 47 i'm pretty sure this was under a dollar or around about a dollar not too long ago so up about 150 percent nice shiba inu getting on a run who knows why well doge getting on a run as well kasama we can see moving Binance coin, they burnt a whole stack of coins uh, literally just not long ago, like the last day or two. So that might have something to do with that. Matic making a bit of, of a move. Look, a couple of nice double digit moves and then we're all into low single digit moves. Again, the market hasn't even really moved a percent, so it's almost sideways trading. What about the losses though? So Quant down, Akomi down, DYDX, V down, Chainlink down a little bit, Flow, look, again, single digit losses so nothing sort of too bad any loss still hurts but if it's only like you know single digits and no one's really getting too worried about it all right the bitcoin chart we can see it's just kind of stuck at this kind of sixty two thousand dollar level we're really having trouble breaking that at the moment but hopefully this is just something like this and something like this you can see we're just going up up down up down up down up down up down and that's just a pattern like a set of steps basically and look that's just a general trending upwards market it's just not parabolic stuff at the moment but we are getting very close to all-time highs now that's on the daily but you go to the weekly we are at all-time highs this is the highest weekly close we've ever been in in bitcoin and then you go to the monthly and it's exactly the same. It's the highest monthly close we've ever had on Bitcoin to date. So things are looking pretty good, but it's just not all going to happen at once. It's not just going to be a click of the fingers and then all of a sudden, you know, Bitcoin's at 100,000. But it is moving quite nicely again. Up, down a little bit, up. You know, we might have a little bit of a sort of down month next month. But then again, no guarantees if things are really going to start to move and heat up you know by sort of december when everyone's saying then we may not see another red month but you know nothing's guaranteed in life so we'll have to wait and see the eth chart though very very interesting so this is the long-term trend uh by the dollar and this is the one since march but what we can see is that eth looks like it's undervalued either way it's under the one since March last year and it's under its long-term one. So I get the feeling like ETH is going to get ready to move really, really hard. Now again, none of this is ever financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. This is the long-term one. And again, the long-term one will likely have to change at some stage, particularly if we go into a bear market. And look, even this one will have to change. But this is the short-time one just since March uh, last year the crash of everything and it is undervalued in both so for me i think eth is getting ready to make some uh, mind-boggling moves it's just really about when it's going to do it but we can see look it broke through this level which is really nice this is where it's sitting at the moment so halfway between really the only kind of two support resistance areas we've got so we're really waiting to see it break 3900 and then start to use that as support. And we're just under it, I mean, 3,730. And look, we've wicked higher than that. We just haven't been able to sustain and hold that. And really, once we get above here, 3,900, then there's really, you know, you could say there's a tiny bit here at what's that, 4,200. 
I really, I'd be surprised if that is any resistance at all. I think that's when things are going to start to get really bullish, particularly when, you know, unfortunately all the new money starts to hear about Bitcoin at all-time highs. That's when they're going to want to jump in and, you know, really chase hard and, you know, hopefully they can get in and get out and take some profits and things like that. But mostly, unfortunately, it's the new money that's going to come in, get burnt and, you know, un you know, unfortunately they're going to be buying our bags because i definitely do plan on taking some profits uh, in the not too distant future but again it's based on how the market's performing a lot of people are saying that the blow off top's probably going to come sort of you know late november early december you know some people have said maybe it pushes pushes out till march and nicholas merton from data dash he said he thinks it could definitely push out till late 2022 and i'm starting to think that's definitely possible at the moment because really this needs to start get up and moving very very quickly for it to have that blow off top come sort of you know at least november december and it's not to say it can't do it i'm just uh, i don't know if i'm seeing it just yet i know september 2017 bitcoin was at about eight thousand ish this was late so early october which is basically where it is we're mid-october now but then it went from eight thousand all the way up to twenty thousand you know in a matter of sort of you know three months i don't know if we're going to you know push the prices you know i think even trying to get to a hundred thousand in the next three months could be a little bit difficult but let alone the prices that other people are talking about you know, 300, 400,000. I'm not sure Bitcoin's going to get to that at this stage in the market. But hey, look, anything's possible. So for me, I'm just keeping an eye on the market. Nothing's really frothing at the moment. And look, when we go over and check some of the tools, I mean, we go here. This is the two-year MA multiplier. It's halfway between the green line and the orange line. And the orange line is usually somewhere around about the top. And the green line is usually somewhere about the bottom, so it's a bear market. We can see we're sitting halfway between there. Let's go to the Puel indicator. Again, the Puel indicator is generally sitting at around about sort of halfway as well. It's got to get up into here before we're really starting to, you know, at least start to consider that, all right, this might be the top. Again, there was the top there, there was the top there, there was the top there, and again, there was a top there. Now, this one didn't quite get up there, but this was just a little hump in the middle of a bigger cycle. So there's two indicators that are showing we're probably around about halfway. Can we double in the next three months, you know, getting into December or two and a half months, really? Uh, definitely could i'm just i'm not seeing it at the moment so we'll have to wait and see and then the pi cycle top indicator as well the same thing you know the orange is generally sort of the bottom thereabouts and the green is around about sort of the top you know you're getting ready for a peak particularly when they cross over is usually well it's not usually it is the top so when the green uh sorry when the orange crosses over the green you know you're at a top i mean have a look at that it was almost perfect as well so at the moment the orange is still quite some way down and this price target is just sitting in between so that's what makes me think you know this could you know push out for a lot longer we need some more sort of bullish news for people to really get cited now when bitcoin goes to its new all-time high that will start to filter out into the public it's the people in crypto that really know what's going on right now the general public aren't paying attention and unfortunately they're going to hear what bitcoins at all time highs and about to hit 80,000 or 100,000 that's when they're going to pile in that is the new money you know there's another word for them another word for them and it's dumb money i don't like to call them dumb money uh i just like to call them new money because they just don't know better it's not that they're dumb it's just they're generally uneducated investors because educated investors don't really want to be you know jumping into stuff at all-time highs you could do a breakout trade that can do really well for you if something's just about to break out into new all-time highs that absolutely can be a good time to jump in it's not always but the chances are higher that that's probably going to go higher as opposed to having a double top but double tops are possible as well and i do apologize but i do need to say this again everything i say is just personal opinion it is not financial advice all right Let's go have a look at this. couple of stories I want to bring to you. So USD is now going to launch on Hedera Hashgraph. They really are 
on just about every sort of major chain out there at the moment. So this is good news. It is now the most sort of trusted stable coin, Circles USDC, uh, and it is on another another chain as well. And Hedera Hashgraph, they, they have been doing uh, not too bad, along with Algorand and things like that, and Stellar. Yeah, USDC, I don't think there's a chain that you can't find it on at the moment. It's not all great news though. Local businesses in New York urge governor to impose statewide Bitcoin mining uh, moratorium. So it has been, uh, uh, the, the governor has been urged by a group of local companies to deny businesses permit to uh, Bitcoin miners. Now New York, New York, New York use a lot of green energy. So it's not that they would be using coal and things like that. Uh, it's quite a green state. But, you know, this is the kind of hurdles that we're still up against. The crypto, you know, people in crypto, obviously we love it and we're all about it, but there's still a lot of people that are just doing everything they can to hold it back. They don't have the regulation that's needed. The big players don't have the positions that they want so they can really capitalize on it. And again, they're lobbying, you know, other people and other businesses you know, to try and slow this down. And this is all part of that. And moving on, New York seems like a, a place that's quite anti-crypto. The New York Attorney General unregistered has come out and sent uh, cease and desist letters to unregistered crypto lenders, uh, telling them that they must shut down. Now, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, today ordered two unregistered crypto lending platforms in the state to cease all operations while demanding that three others hand over information about their crypto operations to our office. Now, the New York Attorney General did not name the crypto lenders in the release and the names of the companies uh, were redacted in the accompanying letters. However, one of the letters bears the file name Nexo Letter, while the other is called Celsius Letter. So it's suggesting that Nexo and Celsius Network are the two companies being targeted by the New York Attorney Generals. Now, at the moment, it remains unclear which other three crypto lenders are being investigated. I'm going to say BlockFi is probably going to be one of them as well. So representatives for Celsius, they have not come out and responded, uh, uh, made a comment, and Nexo is uh, saying that they're not offering any of its earned products uh, and exchange in New York, so it makes little sense to be receiving a cease and desist letter for something that they're not offering in New York anyway. But they did come out and say they will engage with the New York Attorney General as this is a clear case of mixing up the letters uh, to the recipients. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty sure the New York Attorney General knew exactly what they're doing. But this is the kind of things that are going on at the moment. I think Coinbase could be another one. Well, actually, I don't know. I think they stopped doing their LEND program. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, I think Nexo will be... Uh, Nexo is obviously one, Celsius is one, I think BlockFi will be another one. And look, this is just the New York Attorney Generals. There are a number of other states that have come out and sent cease and desist letters uh, to, you know, the same companies, basically Celsius, BlockFi, and no, no doubt Nexo will kind of get the exact same thing. But it is not a ban on them totally, it's just a cease and desist. But the problem is how can they say they are offering securities when cryptos have not been determined as securities. That's the problem. There's a lack of regulation. And once they get clear regulation, then yes, maybe they have to cease and desist or simply get registered. Because that's the problem at the moment. They're unregistered. And that's why these letters are being sent out. So this is regulation that is desperately needed. We just have to hope that it's you know not completely horrible uh, legislation. And, and look, unfortunately, it's going to be somewhere in between the legislation that we really want, we're not going to get that, and the legislation that we don't want. It's going to be finding some middle ground. But it is, it's disappointing. Look, I don't know how else to say it. It's disappointing that Celsius, Blockfly, and Nexo are offering these products that can really help people, but because of a lack of regis uh, legislation, again, you know, states are coming out and saying, oh, that's an unregistered security. Well, no, it's not an unregistered security because it has not been declared, a, you know, a security or a non-security. That is the problem. So disappointing. Look, for me, I'm not panicking. I, I, I still think Celsius will be able to operate. Uh, they may have to get registered and they may have to pay fines, unfortunately, which is most likely something that will come of this. 
but this is the problem with there being no clear legislation regulation whatever you want to call it is that things like this are going to happen but again i don't think block fire going to go away i don't think nexo is going to go away i don't think celsius is going to go away i think it is just yeah this is part of the the ups and the downs you know the highs and the lows of us finally getting to crypto being fully adopted worldwide and there being clear legislation and regulations around what is allowed and what isn't allowed all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another we should all be on that game train at the moment and i'll see you next time